Good morning, and welcome to Faith Lutheran here in Valley City, North Dakota. My name is Pastor Jamie Desai. You are a talkative group, I've noticed, but uh, why don't we just start this way. Uh, why don't you say hello to the people around you. If I know you know them, but just say hello, hi, how are you, good to see you, thanks for coming. Hello, good, good, morning. good morning. Good morning. You are good at that. We may uh, be doing something, uh, sometimes when I come out to worship at different congregations, I have them spend a minute and 45 seconds answering a question. That may be applicable to you guys too, but we, I won't do it today to scare you, but uh, welcome to uh, Faith, and uh, as we prepare for worship, I just would ask you to take a moment of pause as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in our call to worship. Come join the journey of Jesus today. Come join him as he walks into places less traveled. Come join the journey of Jesus today. Stand and let us sing, Will You Come and Follow Me? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way instead of putting others before ourselves. We long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have to pass by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life, save us from ourselves, and free us to love our neighbors. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven and you are free to love as God loves. I'm going to invite you to be seated at this point. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The world 
for the health of the church, for the unity of all. For this holy house, for all who worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison, every day. That we may live out your impassioned response to the hungry and the poor. That we may live out truth and justice and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison, every day. For peace in our hearts, for peace in our homes, for friends and family. For life and for love, for our work and our play. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Here he is, a son, on our world and on our way. Here he is, a son, every day. For your spirit to guide, that you center our lives in the water and the word. That you nourish our souls with your body and blood. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison, every day. One more time. Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison, every day. Please join me in our prayer of the day. Let us pray. Sovereign God, ruler of all hearts, you call us to obey you, and you favor us with true freedom. Keep us faithful to the ways of your Son, that leaving behind all that hinders us, we may steadfastly follow your path. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite the children. We have children that want to come up. Maybe say hi to me. Everybody? No? One? Boy, you're quick. Come on. We got girls this time. Ugh. Hey, I'm Pastor Julie. Hi. 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 Want to shake my hand with me? Okay. Um, Today we're talking about following Jesus, okay? And you guys know how to, ever played follow the leader before? No? You have, okay, so you know how it goes. So what you do is you follow the person wherever they go. So I thought maybe you could follow me. Can you do that? You can do it in any order. Um, where should we go? Let's go this way. Follow me and I'll test you. See how I'm doing. How are they doing? Are they following me? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you guys can just talk amongst yourselves. Okay, you ever been in this room? Just follow me this way. Just turn the light up. Wow, isn't that cool? Look at all the bags of candy. Okay, you follow me back out here. Where do you think we'll be? Okay. We're just walking. Oh, we could march. Okay, you can do what I do. Raise your right hand. Okay, your left hand. Jump. Hey, where does this go? I don't know. We'll go try it. Oh, come on, son. We'll be back. <laughs> come on. Where do we go? Where does this go? Hopefully, the door doesn't.
We're back. See, they're still sitting where they were before, too. Yeah? Are you tired yet? Okay, you can sit down. Thanks for waiting. They wanted to stay outside, and uh, right? Jesus says, follow me. So we're going to say a prayer, and that's all you have to remember. Jesus says, follow, and you follow just like we did today. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, for being our leader. Help us to follow you. We pray in Jesus' name, and we pray amen. Amen. Thanks for coming up. You're very brave. Oh, I'm supposed to give you something, aren't I? Oh, yeah. That's why we come up. Okay. And now, let us hear the word of God. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go return your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazal as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel Moloha, as prophet in your place. So he set out from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat, who was plowing. There were 12 yoke of oxen ahead of him, and he was with the 12th. Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle over him. He left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. Then Elijah said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? He returned from following him, took the yoke of oxen, and slaughtered them. Using the equipment from the oxen, He boiled their flesh and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out and followed Elijah and became his servant. The word of the Lord. The responsive reading is Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. All All my delight is in the godly, that are in the land. But those who run after other gods, I will not pour out drink offerings to such gods. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. I have set the Lord always before me. My heart, therefore, is glad and my spirit rejoices. For you, I will not, for you will not abandon me to the grave. You will show me the path of life. A reading from Galatians. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you are called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that, is, take care that you are not consu- consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For those are opposed to each other, 
to, to prevent you from doing what you want, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, fornication, impurity, adultery, sorcery, amenities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of, this, the, fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the gospel acclamation. When Jesus drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When the disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow, follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go home and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. And Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Please be seated. Today I'm going to um, talk to you a little bit about the three big quotes that Jesus had. And I'm just kind of wondering, um, do you have a favorite quote? Um, something that if you meet somebody new or you're at a party, you can pull out and impress people. If you don't, uh, it's a good thing to have, I'm telling you. So I'm just kind of wondering, if you were to have a favorite quote, something that maybe represented you or something you wanted to say, um, what would you have? Who would it be that you would like to quote? Um, you'll see quotes up around. Um, if you go to uh, a school, they often have quotes from different presidents or different people. If you go to a coach's office, coaches often have them. Sometimes at the dentist, maybe sometime at the chiropractor. Do you have any quotes on your wall, Justin? Do you have? 
Okay, can you recite it? No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, so, and usually they're kind of like uh, um, encouraging, they give you hope, they build us up, something like that that you'd like to uh, emulate in your life. But we as people like quotes, especially when they come from important people. Now I'm going to give you a few quotes and we'll see uh, if you can guess who said them. Are you ready? First one. Um, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Yes, very good, President Kennedy. It's a little tougher now. Be the change that you would like in the world. Anybody from India here? Anybody? Uh, Mahatma Gandhi. And this is for your sports people. You will miss 100% of the shots you do not take. Who said that? Close. Wayne Gretzky. Well, good try. <laughs> But uh, quotes give us hope, and today, um, Jesus, there are three quotes that are probably one of uh, some of the most famous quotes that he ever said in the Bible, and they're all in one little particular passage, and he gives them to people who uh, are responding to wanting to be, they want to be disciples, and here are the three quotes. He says, foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Second one is, let the dead bury their own dead, but as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And the third one, no one who puts their hand to a plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. They're good quotes, right? Some of them you kind of wonder what he's trying to say there. Now my guess, if I were to guess, about uh, the author of um, the Gospel of Luke, these are three things that Jesus said, and I'm, I'm guessing not all at the same time. They may have been accumulated. And he puts them all here to make a point about what it means to be a disciple. Um, but when I read those quotes in the context of people wanting to follow Jesus, like I try to do, and I'm assuming like most of you try to do, when I, when I hear these, these quotes in response to what to be, want to be um, disciples, I, I feel a kind of, a sort of guilt. I feel bad. I feel guilty because I know that, you know, I can't follow Jesus 100%. I can't just drop everything, uh, all my possessions, leave my family, go somewhere. So why does it make me feel guilty? And I don't think that's Jesus' point. So we'll look at these three people that came to Jesus. The first one is a, sort of an anxious, maybe naive person. This is the kind of person who sends you a Christmas card and brags about everything their children are doing, right? This person is kind of that sort of ego, and he says to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go, whatever it takes, I'll be there, right? 100%. And I can hear Jesus going, uh-huh, yeah. Uh, and his response um, is, I will, uh, is the foxes in the hole um, quote. Um, but you remember Jesus' disciples, his, his original 12, when it came to the crucifixion, nobody was there. It's not easy to follow Jesus. Even the disciples could not follow him into his darkest moments. So what is Jesus trying to say when he says, foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has uh, nowhere to hang his head? It's a great quote. The second guy comes up to him and says, uh, less naive, he has an excuse now for not dropping everything he has and following Jesus. He says, uh, Jesus, let me go bury my dead. So somebody in his family has died. That's a pretty good excuse, right? If you were in school or at a job, you bring that excuse and they'll let you go, right? But no, Jesus answers again with a, a mysterious quote. He says, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Tough words. Um, great quote. Then the third guy comes and he says uh, to Jesus that he wants to follow him. He says, Jesus, first let me say goodbye to my family. Now, if you're con ser seriously considering giving everything up to follow God, to follow Jesus, wouldn't uh, you want to, like, maybe tell your family, say goodbye to them, right? Um, and then Jesus says, no one who puts a hand to a plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. They're all very 
classic good quotes by Jesus, but they still, they make me feel less than, not good enough, um, guilty for not being able to follow him 100%. Now, if, not, if I'm feeling that, I'm figuring other people are feeling that, the people of Jesus' time, but also you. You know, it, it, uh, you, you want to follow, but you just seem to fall short, especially when Jesus says words like this. So if I'm feeling bad about being not the best disciple I can be, and you're feeling like, wow, this is really hard, other people, the disciples, and all people throughout history must have felt the same way. So the point is this. What is the point? Why does Jesus, can you imagine this now? You're trying to recruit, let's say, people to come to church. And so when they come, then you, you discount them and say they're not good enough? Well, let me look at what the point may be. Because Jesus is not making this easy at all. Even the best excuses are there. So what is he trying to tell us in our quote? Uh, if you're an English teacher or someone who knows uh, anything about English literature, you'll know what a hyperbole is. And that means a, an extreme exaggeration, right? And we use those in English to um, make a point. And I think Luke is trying to make a point because he puts these three very famous quotes by Jesus all together. And here's the point. The point is to be a follower of Jesus, to follow in Jesus' name, is to not put the focus on yourself. It's not to put the focus on me and what I'm doing and what I can do in order to follow. The focus needs to be upon Christ. Following Jesus is not about how spectacular a follower can or could be. I mean, it would be fine to give up all your time, talents, possessions, family, and follow him, but it's, it's unrealistic, and that's what it's not about. You're not called to be the super sacrificer Christian. If not everything, then what do we do? What does this mean? Um, normal disciples, and you can correct me from I'm, if I'm wrong, normal people I talk to who are Christian um, will tell you that we, we try to do maybe simple things, um, and we usually do, we usually lump those into nots. Do not do this, right? So I think I'm a good Christian if I don't take the Lord's name in vain, if I don't drink to excess in public, right? um, if I'm kind to others, and if I do these things, then maybe somehow they make me worthy enough to follow Jesus. But that's not the point. The point is that we're, we're, we're to keep our focus on Christ, and we, when we do that, we see what God is doing and not worrying about, am I giving up enough stuff? Am I sacrificing? Am I good enough? It's human nature for us to somehow want to sacrifice in order to be a person worthy of following, but that's not how it works. Jesus is making this point. And now I'm going to ask you another question. Um, this will be a raise your hand. How many people here went through Lutheran confirmation? Anybody here? Okay, this will be good. How many people here had to memorize something in conf confirmation? Even better. How many people can still remember what they... Uh-huh. Okay, that's a tough crowd. Mm. Well, uh, confirmation, Ten Commandments. What does this mean? L Luther has an explanation for all of them. And he says, we are to fear and love God above all else. Focus is on God, not on ourselves. And then the third article of the creed, who, who can recite that? Anybody? Yeah. All right. If somebody can, man, good job. But it goes like this, and I have to read it too because I forget says, I believe I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the one true faith, quote Martin Luther. Um, we like to think that we are just really good, good uh, doers, right? We like to think that it's all in our hands. We like to think that our sacrifices ho somehow make us worthy to be a disciple of Jesus. We like to cr take credit for our efforts. 
but our focus is misplaced. So today Jesus is readjusting our glasses of faith, enabling us to put our trust in God and God's goodness, and then let the Spirit do what the Spirit is supposed to do, according to Martin Luther. Now, the Apostle Paul uh, puts it this way. He wrote in Galatians today. He says, Since you are led by the Spirit, since, since you are led by the Spirit, the Spirit is alive in you. It's not we're doing things to try to, to try to appease God in order to be a good disciple. It's already within us, flowing around us. Our job is not um, to go out and seek first to be the best good, do-gooder we can. It's to trust that God's good is good enough. Our job is to trust that. So, what, what is this good that the Spirit is supposed to be doing in and through us? Paul says this, verse 22. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Jesus' point is the same one that Luke is trying to make when he puts these three quotes together. He, you don't put the cart before the horse. Younger people have older people explain to you that analogy, cart before the horse. Um, the Spirit will work its fruits in and through your life, and you don't have to be concerned about being the best do-gooder, having enough stuff to put on your Christmas card so everybody goes, oh, we are human beings. We are not human doings. Allow the Spirit to work in your life. So, quintessential question for today is this. For you, are you going to trust that God's good is good enough? Are you going to trust that God's good is good enough and God will do that good in and through you? And it may... Um, people ask me every once in a while, so in the ministry, uh, isn't it hard to see results, right? Like when you mow the lawn, I love mowing the lawn because I can see the lawn is mowed, right? But in ministry, it's really hard, and people don't come up to you, at least me as a pastor, don't come up to you all the time and say, oh, remember that time you uh, said this in a sermon, and it could be three years later, try, try to do that to a pastor, because we'll never remember, but... Um, a lot of the times we will be involved in, in life and the Spirit will be working within us and we won't see the results. Maybe not in our lifetime, but maybe the next. The point is this, let the Spirit do its work in you. Don't worry about what you should or shouldn't do, what you can't. Those, spirit, those fruits of the Spirit will live in and through you. And maybe, if you're lucky, in your lifetime, you may get a glimpse of some of that spirit work that was done through you. But until then, we wait. Let us pray. Gracious Lord God, for your spirit to work in and through us, we ask for your help. We know that we can't see results all the time for what, what good that is done through us. But Lord, instead of having us worry or be shamed or feel guilty about the things we do or do not do, work your spirit through us so that someday there may be more love and peace, patience, gentleness, kindness, and generosity in our world. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Let us together as people of God affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Would you bow your heads with me for a word of prayer? Let us pray. Gracious Lord God, we give you thanks for choosing us to be your disciples. Help us to keep our focus on you and to know that all good things flow through your spirit. May we follow you without guilt or shame, that we are doing enough, and trust that your, your fruits will flow in and through us to our neighbor and to the world, we pray, Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, for the beauty of your earth, for all life that your spirit breathes into the world, we give you thanks. Lord, we pray for all those who grow food for our tables, all those who are involved in harvesting and bringing them our, your bounty to our hungry world, we pray, Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Lord, we offer up to you all our cares, our concerns, our struggles, our suffering. We pray for the sick, for those who are recovering from physical, mental, or emotional evils. Lord, this world has cast upon us many struggles. We pray for those we love, especially Clara and Mavis, Diane and Lorette, Steve, Bonnie, Sue, Carmen, Samuel, Marty, Anita, Lori, Rory, Arlene, Wes, Mary, and all those people we name in our hearts today. Lord, we ask that you remember the Brockup family with the death of Geraldine. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Gracious Lord God, we give you thanks for all the blessings that you bestow upon us for this morning, for the opportunity to join here in freedom, to be able to have friends and family. We pray for the young um, baptism of um, Cameron Rausch, we also ask your blessings upon the, the marriage of Pastor Kyle and Katie Gearman. For life and breath and for all good things, we give, the, we give thee thanks, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Yes, it is into your hands, O Lord, that we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share the peace of the Lord.
please rise. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and our grace. It is indeed right and our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened up to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with all the church on earth, and all the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. It was in the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and more. Amen. The table is now set. You are all invited to share in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Please be seated.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for joining us for worship today. Let's close by singing. I've decided to follow Where's Jesus. My band. Sing. Band oh, kids, you can come up and play. Come on. instrument.